Ooh, take a look at this haunted mansion. A haunted mansion. The word mansion means a big house. A big house. Do you live in a mansion? I wish I lived in a mansion, but not a haunted mansion. The word haunted means that ghosts live in the house. Is your house haunted? I hope my house isn't haunted. Now, if you would go into a haunted house, what would you see? What are some things you would see? Well, you would for sure see lots of cobwebs. Okay, these things are called cobwebs. Cobwebs are dusty spider webs. Dusty spider webs. You know, if you go into an old house, you see cobwebs hanging from the ceiling. But a cobweb is, I think, a bit different than a spider web because a lot of cobwebs don't have spiders in them, right? Like, I think I have some small cobwebs in my kitchen, and it just looks like a little bit of dust hanging off the ceiling. So I'm not sure if that was made by a spider. Was that made by a spider? Do you have cobwebs in your house? Are they made from spiders or, or do they just randomly appear? It seems like a lot of cobwebs just randomly appear. It doesn't look like spiders made them, but I don't know. Actually, I don't even know what a cobweb is. Do you know what a cobweb is? Let me know down there in the, co in, in the comments if spiders make cobwebs or do they just appear? Because all the cobwebs in my house, I mean, there's no spiders. Are there spiders in the cobwebs in your house? I really have no idea. Like, these cobwebs here look like they were made from spiders, right? But some of the cobwebs that hang off the ceiling, they don't look like they were made from spiders. So I don't know where they came from. Maybe it's just dust or something. Let me know if you know. I'm supposed to be teaching you, but actually I don't even know what a cobweb is. So, oh, you might see a skeleton in the house, in a haunted house, or you might see some skulls. Okay, a person's head bone is called the skull. Okay, and all the bones together are called the skeleton. Okay, ooh, now you might see a goblin in a haunted house. A goblin. I don't even know what a goblin is. <laughs> Do you know what a goblin is? I think it's sort of like a ghost. It's like a, a creature that lives in a haunted house or in a haunted forest, maybe? I'm not sure. I don't even know what a goblin is. Why am I even teaching this lesson? I don't even know any of these things. I don't know what a cobweb is. I don't know what a goblin is. If you know what a goblin is, let me know down there in the comments because I have no idea what a goblin is. It looks sort of funny. Hey, hey, look at his ears. His ears are almost as big as my ears. Wow. Maybe I'm a goblin. Am I a goblin? <laughs> Let me know down there. Do you think I'm a goblin? I hope not. I'm not evil. I'm a nice, I'm a nice guy. Maybe I'm a nice goblin. Okay. Hey, you might also see a rocking chair, an old creaky rocking chair. Creaky means, um, that's what creaky means. It makes that sort of that noise. Okay, so you might see an old rocking chair in a haunted house. You might also see a jack-o'-lantern. Okay, this is called a jack-o'-lantern. It's a pumpkin, but it has like eyes and a nose and a mouth cut out uh, and a light inside, like a candle or something, to make it look sort of scary. Okay, um, now you might also see 
a gravestone or a tombstone. Both of these words mean the same thing, a gravestone or a tombstone. And RIP means rest in peace. Okay, RIP is sometimes on tombstones, right? It just means rest in peace. Okay, ooh, now you might see a coffin or a casket in a haunted house, okay? Both of these words mean the same thing, coffin and casket. Now you might see a black cat, a black cat. Now in our culture, some people believe that a black cat means bad luck. So if you see a black cat, that might mean that you have bad luck, right? For example, if you are driving down the road and a black cat runs across the road in front of you, that might be bad luck. Then you're worried, right? What's going to happen? Am I going to get into an accident? Right? Some people are very superstitious. Superstitious, okay? Superstitious is when people believe in these kinds of things, right? Like a cat. It's just a cat, right? It's just a black cat. What's the difference between a black cat and a white cat? Well, Nothing, but superstitious people believe that a black cat is sort of evil or, or something. I don't know. That's called superstitious. Are you superstitious? I'm not superstitious at all. I'm the least superstitious person in the world. But you know what? A lot of people around the world are very superstitious. Okay, for example, if you go to... India or Pakistan or Afghanistan, you're going to see a lot of kids with black stuff around their eyes, like black eyeliner or eyeshadow around their eyes. Why is that? Well, it's because a lot of people in those countries believe that if they put black stuff around a baby's eyes or a kid's eyes, that will somehow keep evil away from the child. It will it will scare away evil. I don't I don't know. I mean, I guess a lot of people believe that. Do you believe that? I don't really think that's true, but I mean that's just my opinion. Maybe it's your opinion. Now, superstitious and religious are a little bit uh, two different things, okay? Like a religion is like, you know, Islam, Christianity, um, Buddhism, and stuff like that. So a lot of, for example, pe Muslims in Muslim countries like Pakistan will do this to their kids. Now, I don't know much about Islam, but I don't think this is part of Islam. If you are a Muslim, let me know down there in the comments, is this actually part of, of Islam? I don't think so. I think it's it's probably just people being superstitious. So a lot of times religious people might have certain uh, superstitions that, that really are not part of their religion officially, right? Um, most of the time religion is sort of mixed with culture. So like if, for example, Muslims in Pakistan and Muslims in other parts of the world might be very different um, because their, you know, their culture and their traditions influence what they believe. So, you know, they might think, for example, uh, for example, some Muslims might think if you, if you kill ants or if you kill insects or animals or something like that, you're, you know, um, you are killing your ancestors, right? Actually, I've met some Muslims who believe that. Uh, I don't think that's part of Islam. I think that's more um, influenced by Hinduism, right? So if you go to Pakistan, for example, uh, there's there's Hindus and, you know, there's, there's sort of, there's influences from Islam and there's also some influences from like India, Hinduism and stuff like that. So I think this is, is superstitious. I don't think it's really religious. But let me know. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. If you do this to your kids, put black around 
their eyes. Let me know, why do you do that? I'm sure some of my subscribers do that. I think it, it actually could be harmful for the child. I've actually heard that that um, if you put that kind of stuff around the eyes, it's actually harmful to the, the child's eyes. So personally, I wouldn't do that. But if you want to do that, I guess it's your choice. Uh, anyway, now scarecrows are often considered to be scary or sort of creepy things, right? I don't know why. It's just a scarecrow. A scarecrow is something you put in your field to scare the birds away because birds are stupid, right? If a bird sees that, the bird thinks it's a person, but it's not a person. It's just a scarecrow. So maybe some birds are smart. I don't even know. Do these things work? Do they actually work or do birds sort of figure out that it's not a real person? I'm not sure. Now, we have a word for these kinds of things. Spooky. Spooky. If something is spooky, that means it's scary. It means it's scary. But there's a difference between these two words. Okay. For example, if a tiger is chasing you, right? If a tiger is attacking you and you're running away, that's a very scary situation, right? It's scary, but it's not spooky. It's not spooky. Spooky means like dark and there might be some evil around, right? The hair on the back of your neck stands up, right? The hair on your neck or the hair on your arms stands up. Right, that means you're scared. It's it's spooky. That's what spooky means. Okay. Now, Halloween is a pretty big event in Canada and the US. All the stores start selling Halloween things like candy, pumpkins, costumes. Okay. So on Halloween, usually people wear costumes. They dress up. You know, they might dress up as I don't know, a goblin or a ghost or something like that. Okay. So they wear costumes and kids go trick or treating, trick or treating. Have you ever, ever been trick or treating? I've been trick or treating when I was a kid. Okay. Trick or treating means going from house to house, uh, asking for candy basically. Okay. So kids go up to a house and they knock on the door and say trick or treat, trick or treat. That basically means give me candy, right? It's just a way to say give me candy. So Halloween is mostly about candy for kids. Kids just want candy. Okay, now on Halloween um, in the evening, kids might come to your house and knock on your door and say trick or treat. Now, if you don't celebrate Halloween or if you don't want kids to come to your house, then turn off all your lights. Okay, turn off your, you know, your porch light, like the light outside your house, and also maybe turn off some lights inside your house so that the kids won't come to the house. Okay, usually that is the signal. If someone has lights on and their their yard light or their, their porch light is on, then kids will go trick-or-treating, right? But actually, it's sort of dangerous for kids to go trick-or-treating in the evening by themselves, right? Because anybody, like a kidnapper, could come and, like, take them away. So usually, parents go trick-or-treating with their kids. Parents will stand, you know, back a little bit on the sidewalk, and then the kids will go to the house, say, trick-or-treat, and then they get candy. Sometimes the kids will sing a song or, I don't know, do something to, to earn the candy. But other times they just say trick or treat and then they hold out their, their pillowcase. Very often um, kids, like if you see that girl there, she's going trick or treating with her pillowcase. Okay, like a pillow, you put your pillow in a pillowcase, right? So you take your pillow out and then you go trick or treating with your pillowcase. A lot of kids, you know, end up with a whole pillowcase full of candy. That's crazy. That's like every kid's dream, right? 
all that candy, but it's really unhealthy. So I think most parents probably say you're only allowed one or two pieces of candy every day. But maybe the kids are disobedient when their parents go to bed. You know, maybe the kids just start eating a lot of candy. I don't know. Have you ever gone trick or treating? It's it's sort of fun. It's it's like a nice thing for kids to do. But personally, I don't really care about this. I don't celebrate it. But it's a you know it's a big it's a pretty big thing in uh, in Canada and the U.S. Even a lot of offices. Like if you work in a nice office, you know, probably someone will decorate the office like for Halloween. They might put some cobwebs or some, you know, a jack-o'-lantern or something like that. Okay, so it's just sort of a nice, it's just a nice event uh, that we have here. Okay, now I want to know, if you could go trick-or-treating, what costume would you wear? What costume would you wear? I have no idea what costume I would wear. What, what do you think I should wear? Should I go as a goblin? Let me know down there in the comments. What would you wear and what should I wear for Halloween if we were to go trick-or-treating together? Let me know down there in the comments and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.